What's up everyone? I think this is literally the first time I've ever started a video on this side. <laughs> but I don't really know why I'm telling you that. Anywho, this video is going to be over domain integrity. So the very first thing we need to discuss is what is this fancy domain word? You know, like, is that like a web address or what is that? Well, essentially domain is the rules for data, what is allowed and what's not allowed. So there are numerous ways we can enforce what data is allowed in a specific column. Some of these are very general ways that are allowed in most database systems. For example, data types are a very great way to have domain integrity. So let me take a step back. If we have domain integrity, what we are saying is that our data is within the allowed values. If we do not have domain integrity, then we cannot trust our data to be in a set of different values or within a certain range of values. So the data types, these are a very general way to restrict data. So for example, you can have a numeric data type and that's going to reject string data. You can have a date data type and that's going to force every single value to be of a date format. You can get very specific on what kind of data you're looking for by using the appropriate data type. So as you get into some more database design and some more advanced database concepts, make sure you understand the data types. By having the correct data types, you can make sure your data has integrity. The other way are some general rules you could use not null. This is an example of a constraint. That would basically force every single row to have a value for that column. You could use unique. That's going to force every single value for that column to be unique, meaning once a value is used, another row cannot use that value. Now, additionally, you can use what's known as a check constraint. So check constraints are pretty awesome and they're not available in all database systems. So I'm pretty psyched that DB2 has them. But check constraints allow us to be extremely, extremely specific on what data is allowed inside of our column. So if you want to be specific on, oh, we can only use values in this range or only these specific options, well, then you might want to look into a check constraint. Now, if you are not using check constraints, there is kind of like an old fashioned way of doing something similar to a check constraint. And that's generally called a lookup table, also known as a validation table. A classic example of this is having the states in a table and then referencing them. So if over here you have a state table, and then in this table, every single row is a state that someone could live in, well then you could only allow those values using a foreign key. So this is kind of goes back to the one to many relationships. If you decide to set it up this way, you can force a column to have a value in that state table. So over here you could have a state column and you could say this references the state table and then the state ID column. And now every single value in this column is going to have to be a row in this state table. So that's an example of a validation table. Nothing too crazy in this video. I know it was really super short, but those are your general guidelines on how you get domain integrity. I didn't go into a ton of detail on how to do all of it, but the point is here is to teach you the basics so then you know where to look if you are trying to do something specific. If you want something more to research, definitely highly recommend the check constraints because that's going to allow you to be very picky with what kind of data gets in your database. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. Check the description for some links. I'll give you a link from my website and also to download DB2. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming content. Like this video and I'll see you in the next one. And yeah guys, that's all we got for database design, at least for now. It's been a journey, but we made it. We made it together. We made it. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Which actually, I lied, the next video is going to be applying some stuff we've been talking about in the last previous videos. So after that, we're good. <laughs>